In the past week, students all across the nation marched to support in support of gun control. The marches made national and international news, and many protesters have gained the attention of national and state legislatures. Here to talk about the protests and what they mean for a new generation of activists are Talking Points analysts Michael Fernari and Brandon Ross. Guys, thank you for being here. My pleasure. So aside from scale, how is this march different from others? And not only other, you know, related to gun march, but other issues of tragedy. Well, in light of the Parkland shooting last month, uh, we saw the Parkland uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School students organize a march in D.C. And this was a massive march. It was about 200,000 people, and a lot of them were actually not young people. I believe st studies showed only about 10% of the population there was of millennial voting age. And, you know, you mentioned in that question what's different about these marches. And one thing that I think is important to emphasize is that this march made a big made voter turnout a big part of their message and they mm -hmm. were very much encouraging young people to go out and vote in the 2018 midterms you know inspired by the events in Parkland. Well do you think we should be expecting any sort of tangible change? Obviously this is something very different from what we've seen after past mass shootings but obviously they're going to continue to happen. Well the thing that I think needs to be looked out for with regards to these protests, and I think history shows this, is that the more specific the protesters get with their messaging and the more specific they are with potential solutions, the more success they're going to have. Now, if you were to look at a movement like Occupy Wall Street that did not have specific solutions, they accomplished very little. And if, Parkland, if the Parkland students can find specific solutions, I think they can have some success. And if people expect really the young population, 18 to 29, to really take over the midterm voting, they should really damper their expectations. Historically, very rarely does the voting on 18 to 29 ever exceed over 20%. 2006 was the last big Democratic wave election. Millennials turned out, at rather, 18 to 29 at a rate of about 23.5%, certainly well below many p other vo age groups. Well, for piggybacking on kind of the Democratic push and then also looking at the specificity of the remarks, you see gun control as a major focus point in this debate, and they're encouraging people to go out and vote. So if the Democrats ultimately attach gun control as a major priority in the 2018 midterms, how would that affect, you know, uh, a, a wave of voters coming in? Well, Josh, I think the Democrats need to be very careful with their messaging going forward. Now, in this week, news came out that the generic poll has re the advantage for the Democrats reduced from about 15 to only about six points right now. Mm -hmm. And going forward, looking at these elections, one of the core issues is that Republicans don't have a reason to turn out. Now, if Republican voters feel that their Second Amendment rights are going to be jeopardized, it gives them a reason to go to the polls in droves, and that's something the Democrats should be very afraid of. And let's not forget the, na the last time a midterm election succeeded a major push for gun control legislation back in 2014. Republicans picked up nine Senate seats and increased their lead in the House from 33 seats to 59 in just one election. And when you look right, like, you, like we've been speaking here, the repercussions for 2018, there were certain factions of, of America that were highly critical of this march, and you've seen them go as far as to criticize Emma Gonzalez for, for supporting her her uh, ethnicity of being Cuban. You actually had pictures of her that were doctored to show her ripping up the Constitution instead of a target practice. Obviously, those have been condemned by many people. Rick Santorum did it with Chris Cuomo the other day. He condemned it. But my, my question is, do you think there's going to be repercussions on the other side of the aisle for that sort of backlash? Well, I think that again, Democrats should maybe be a little bit wary as NRA donations have tripled over the last month. And I think that what we're seeing is all it's really doing is ramping up the intensity on both sides. And that we're not really finding a middle ground here. All people seem to be doing is finding more reasons to justify their own previous stances. And, and something that I've always found interesting is the paradox, and we saw it when Hillary Clinton looked like she might win. Gun sales went through the roof. Ever since President Trump has been in office, they have subdued because there is that fear that no longer will their guns be taken away. So I think that is also something to watch. Certainly a contentious theme and something that is definitely going to be we'll a major theme in 2018. We'll leave the conversation we'll there. there. Brandon, Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks.